working in cybersecurity, you get a lot of questions. You answer a lot of questions. Um, how did this hacker get in my computer system? How do I get this hacker out of my computer system? Um, would you please tell me how a hacker could get into my bank? But one of the most interesting questions that we get uh, is, is this one. Why not just get rid of this dark web? Where all of this terrible stuff happens, where all these things are sold, why don't we just get rid of it? It turns out that it's a really interesting question, but in order to answer it, we have to look a little deeper. So follow me. What is the dark web? In order to, uh, to really dig in, let's talk about the existing internet. The internet as you know it uh, is mostly referred to as the surface web in technical terms. Surface web, places like Facebook, um, Google, Instagram, things like that, uh, systems that just about any indexing system can, can gain access to. A layer below that is actually where the majority of the internet lies. Uh, we refer to it as the deep web. About 96% of the content on the internet is hidden inside the deep web. The deep web usually has a login and a password, hopefully not a default password, uh, and behind that is all the information you need in order to do your work, whether it's a company that has information about how they do business, whether it's a hospital with all of your patient records. All of that is stored behind the scenes on the deep web. And below that, you have the dark web. Uh, the dark web contains all sorts of different things from uh, pirated movies to uh, adult sorts of sites to some of the dark web markets uh, and the black markets that, that you hear about so much in the news. Something like two trillion dollars of um, illegal transactions happen every single year on the dark web. It's a stunning number. Uh, and the dark web's dark web markets are places where any number of different things can be sold, whether it's your identity, medical records, uh, or, of course, drugs. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things that may be a little shocking. This is actually a screenshot taken from the dark web. So uh, originally, this presentation was supposed to be about the relative good and bad and different things that exist on the, on the dark web. But the more research that I did, the more into this question I, I got, uh, I really kind of came to the same conclusion as many of the people who asked me the question. Um, with this kind of crap on the internet, especially when it's hidden on the dark web, why don't we just get rid of it? Um, it's actually very easy to stumble into this stuff once you're on the dark web. Uh, a simple click can land you on a site like this one. So, why don't we just hit the emergency button and be done with all of this? Well, it, it turns out there are really three parts to this question. First off, it's a question of technical complexity. Um, unlike the internet, which was a research project that a bunch of um, uh, academics put together in order to communicate with one another, the dark web was designed from the ground up to be secure and private and uses extensive encryption um, you find more security around some of these dark web markets than you would on Amazon or any of the other sites where you're ordering information. Uh, the, the technical complexity on the dark web is pretty stunning. The system doesn't exist in one place. So unlike the internet where you have Amazon that hosts all of the information that you can see, the dark web has a number of different nodes a node that doesn't know where the information is coming from and doesn't necessarily know who they're sending it to. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer network and it makes it very difficult to have a single point of control. You can't just push a single button and make a node go away and affect the rest of the system. It will simply reroute that traffic. So there are a number of technical reasons why you just can't flip a switch and shut this kind of traffic off. There's also a question of free speech. By getting rid of the dark web, you may be impinging on other people's First Amendment rights. Now, the dark web uh, has certainly got a well-deserved reputation for being a place where uh, people use that First Amendment right. This is another example. Uh, this is actually taken from a system called 8chan, and believe it or not, uh, it is a support group for mass shooters. 
Now, because of the way that the dark web is architected, these guys can get on and talk about whatever they like, including planning some of this stuff, uh, without fear of reciprocity and, for the most part, without fear of law enforcement. So, the extreme freedom of speech that exists on the dark web cuts both ways. You also have uh, the black market and uh, uh, the vast majority of the information that is bought and sold or uh, moved around on the, on the dark web, most of that is, um, uh, is drug related. But some interesting things have happened in, uh, in Europe where the drug markets are most active, fully a third of all drug purchases, which is billions of dollars, a third of all of those transactions in Europe are now happening on the dark web. Uh, but there are some advantages to that. You don't have to go down a, bar, a dark alley to go meet somebody that you've never met and trust that they're giving you something that isn't going to kill you. Uh, you don't have to go to some shady bar or some bad part of town. You simply order it. But in ordering it on the dark web, you can see here from uh, Wall Street Market, there's a very active feedback system. So people who are selling, let's say heroin, online, before you place an order, that vendor will ask you, how often do you use? Where do you like to use? Um, what kind of quantity or what kind of quality? They ask a variety of different questions of the people who order this stuff online in order to make sure that that person isn't going to OD because drug dealers, like Amazon, know that their real money is in repeat business. And if somebody ODs, they're not likely to order again. Interestingly enough, you can see this rating system, which looks a lot like Amazon. Um, if you sell somebody a drug and it works really well, you get five stars. If you sell somebody a drug but you don't package it well, they'll give you one star because the police showed up afterwards and asked where you got the, uh, where you got the package. So uh, this feedback system actually in some cases has made it safer for people to purchase things that, truth be told, they were probably going to purchase anyway. So where does any of this stuff leave us? It's a, it's a complicated question. Alpha Bay was a market that was taken down by Europol recently, and uh, interestingly enough, it took several years for these um, agents to track this system down. After they took down Alpha Bay, another market was stood up within a day, and those same agents who had spent years trying to track these guys down came out and said that indeed it had a very short lifespan in terms of the significant impact. It really didn't change anything. In addition to that, I mentioned the, the technical complexities associated with the dark web. Uh, the, the inability to track information that's online, uh, although that is changing over time, has a lot to do with this browser, Tor, which was originally created by the NSA. And uh, that technical complexity, though, um, because it has been uh, in existence for a while, has led to some pretty significant seizures. This is a, a site called Pink Meth. Uh, these guys were taken down a, f a few years ago at this point. Uh, it was a site where individuals would take pictures of an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend, post them, and then charge for access to that system. But because the dark web in its current form had existed for a while, the feds were able to use some of the traceability from earlier stings, things like Alpha Bay, to track these guys down. And I'm happy to say that the individuals behind Pink Meth are now behind bars and will be for quite a while. Last but not least, uh, a significant portion of the dark web is used for communication. So there are a number of countries around the world where uh, the free press doesn't exist. This is a picture of a protester in Venezuela, and a lot of the information that we get about what happens in Venezuela actually comes from the dark web. ProPublica and um, SecureDrop and a number of different sites are available to allow people to take video of things that are happening inside of places like Iran and China and so forth, and post them to share with the outside world things that if they were to post it just to Facebook, at a minimum would get them sent to jail, and at worst, could get them killed. So we learn a lot about what happens inside of closed countries like Venezuela from the dark web. So at the end of the day, uh, I would tend to go back to the 1500s. 
notores mala upima, which means an evil thing that is known is best. Markets aren't going to disappear overnight, even if we were able to get rid of the dark web, which we can. We're probably better off with the devil that we know than the devil that we don't. Thank you for listening.